Well, I started sensing some things in my hotel room. God's dispatching more angels to this local church for the purpose of miracle power. Amen. You know, one, one thing about uh, ministering as long as, uh, as we've ministered, and as many times as we've ministered, as long as we've ministered, which really, uh, you know, just the years don't tell the story right. as much as the uh, many times that we've had an opportunity to minister, multiple services, uh, multiple settings, multiple opportunities to teach and preach the word. And obviously, many, many of you who have been uh, amazing hearers, and even more amazing than that, follow-up doers. That's really what God's plan is. And for mankind to realize how special and unique each and every one of us are. That's why you should know who you are. Right. You, should, you should do everything within your power to negate reasons why you shouldn't see yourself, why he sees you. Because he's always going to see you the way he sees you. But it's up to you and I to see ourselves like he sees us in order to have access to that. We're just going to look at a few quick things today. Uh, again, anything I, anything I could say, I could say I've said probably a multitude of times. Obviously, there are things that uh, we say the same, but we say them in a different way uh, that, that gets my attention, which helps me continue to grow and to flourish, realizing how big God is, how much he knows, and how much he wants to share with his kids. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says that if any man or any woman be in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation, a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. Obviously, that's the spiritual transaction when one receives the Lord Jesus. They become brand new. One translation says uh, they've never been in existence before, this new creation. In other words, the dead you is removed, and it's replaced with the life and nature of God. It's a new you. It's a, it's, it's a new you. It's a new you. It's a new you, and it's the you that stays connected with him for eternity. 2 Corinthians 5.21, we see how that was able to happen. For he, he God, hath made him, him who? Jesus, to be sin, so that you and I might be made the righteousness of God in him. I really, I really like that. I really like the Bible. I'm a Bible guy. I'm a word guy. I'm easy to please. God connects with me, and I'm thinking, hey, whatever you got to offer, I got to have me some more of that. Yes. Huh? Yes. And, and, and everything that he had written is so powerful, yes. so dynamic. Yes. You know, I see people that have a form of godliness. They've got doctorates and theological degrees, but there's nothing burning in their right. life or in their voice. It's like a mundane blah, 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 blah. Instead of knowing that living in us is the creator of the universe. That by his spirit and through his word, he's made us his kids. He has given us his DNA. The very blood of his son has made us alive. You know, that make you feel good about yourself. Amen. You know, most people have issues with themselves. But, you know, if you just think about that kind of calmly and methodically, like I just told you, you kind of take a look at yourself and you go, <clears throat> maybe I can have me a nice bracelet.
Maybe I can have me a nicer this or a nicer that. Maybe God loves me enough that, that I can have an easy life. That is in comparison to a person that doesn't have him. And sure enough, that's part of the program. Yes. That our life be easy. Yes, amen. Not that we just rest and relax naturally, but our life is easy. Yeah. It's got a flow to it. It's got a purpose to it. Yes. And really, the purpose is all centered up on loving him. Yes. Because out of that relationship, that's where the rest comes from. That's where the peace comes from. For he hath made him sin. Didn't they do a great job on that? Huh? Yeah. Now, I'm going to have to get a copy of that and, and slow it down to about 90, 95 <laughs> miles an hour. You know, I'm trying, I'm trying to watch the moves and the stuff because, you know, I'm going I'm to get my rap on one of these days. Because I'm, I'm a... I, and, and many of you know, I'm a cracker rapper. So, so I mean, I, but I mean, just, uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get all the words and everything. I probably need to have it written out for me, you know. I know they were on the screen, but I mean, the screen's moving pretty dadgum quick. And then you got all this activity going up front here. You know, age has its privileges. I mean, you have to kind of, you know, you have to kind of. Just move a little bit. You just move a little bit different, you know. <laughs> For he hath made him to be sin. We wouldn't, we wouldn't really have to go by this verse. Even, how many of you have heard that verse like you'd think millions of times or thousands of times or, or hundreds of times? And you've even paid attention to it on several occasions. But you just think about how jam-packed that verse is huh? with life. God made Jesus sin. No, Jesus didn't involve himself in the activities of sinning. But God put the sin of mankind, including us, on him, knowing full well that he was the only one that could do anything about it. So he put everything, every sin, every sickness, every malady, huh? every headache, every dis-ease that you would experience in this life, he put it on him. And he was able to do that because the master had not sinned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah so that you and I could take his substitution as our very own. And he was okay with that. He was okay with you and I being free because of what Jesus was willing to bear for us. What a supernatural transaction that was. Far too copious, obviously, for the dimensions of our comprehension. Ain't nobody smart enough to figure that out. But God had a plan. And his plan was for us to be with him forever. And the only thing he was asking man to do was to believe in the plan. By faith, which by the way, he provided man. He provided us everything. All he needed was our willingness to receive what we heard. You know, we're going to talk about it one of these days. I've really been meditating on it, and we're going to talk about, uh, talk about the will of man because we know uh, the mind, the will, and the emotions uh, are, are the soul of man. And um, really the most important ingredient there is the will. It's the will. The will is the most important ingredient, and we've all got a will that'll go either way. 
If we just had to rely on your emotions, your feelings, you'd be in big trouble. Hmm? Big trouble. But your will is this miraculous spot that can be swayed. It can be swayed. Jesus had a will. He knew what he was going to face. He'd never been there. And actually, I don't believe he was thinking about anything physically whatsoever. He had one thing, one thing on his mind, that he was going to be separated from God. And he'd never been separated from God. For no other reason was he sweating as if it were great drops of blood. The pressure on him was the fact that he was going to be separated from God. He didn't know what that looked like. He never had. But because he did and was willing to, we don't have to. Hallelujah. Because he asked the Father, Father, if, if you be willing, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, m- not my will, but your will be done. You know, that's how you have a successful life as a Christian. Be honest with you and be honest with him. He already knows you're struggling if you're struggling with something. But you have to will to do the will of God. You will to do the will of God, whatever it is. We could go around the room, and if if every one of us would be uh, honest about one thing that we've uh, drug our feet on, we'd all have at least one thing to talk about. Now, it doesn't have to be shared like that, obvious, obviously. But the bottom line is you need to understand that no matter what you come up against that's in opposition to what you know he would have you do, your will hangs in the balance. Even after you're a child of God. You must will to do the will of God. won't work any other way. And he paid for us to have the strength and the authority to do that, praise God. For he hath made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that you and I might be made the righteousness of God. God's very righteousness is ours. Because are having received the Lord Jesus as our Savior. God counted what his son did as everything that needed to be done so that we could be his sons and daughters. That is so huge that anybody entertaining anything on a lower level than that is entertaining the wrong thing. Really, all you have to focus on. I mean, if you have that revelation, you know, you have to have a revelation of, of, of who you are. Yeah. And if you have a revelation of, uh, of being a child of God, then think about it. Because really, that is the apex yes. in life. And honestly, everything else will be fulfilled and enjoyed based on your understanding of the great love he had for mankind to do what he was willing to do. And you can't think about that just like you watch a movie. You can't, you can't, you you can't understand that just like, you know, you read a a novel or a book or something. You, You can't. It's, it's deeper than that. But it's not so deep that you can't get it and keep it. You know why? Because if you seek it, you'll find it. If you want to know how deep his devotion and affection and love for you is, just think about it. Just think, get all your dumb stuff out the way. Huh? Quit thinking about washing your car. Quit thinking about the breakfast burritos. And think about how much he loves you. 
and what he did for you. Now, again, you won't be able to, you won't be able to process this intellectually. But something will happen right now. Something will happen right here, just somewhere in between here and here, you know. Somewhere between where the river flows and the heart grabs. Huh? The river flows. That's a, I'm talking about living, rivers of living water. I'm not talking about some natural thing, you know. But I, but some, somewhere between here and here, huh? Is where you know that you know that you know. Thank you, Father. You know that you know that you know something bigger than you know you knowing, huh? Knowing Him, but that He knows you. See all those people scurrying around. See, that's how that, that's how that rap and that presentation looked to me when they showed this deal right here. All those people in those cars going everywhere. That's, that's where these guys up there. <laughs> Just, the word even said it. Y'all be still. Y'all be still. And know that I am God. Most of us, for too many years in our life, we're trying to not think about anything. But we're all in a position now where we can just know he's God. And he loves you ever much as he did the day that Jesus died for you. And he's always for you and never against you. Let me look at some things. You guys are, you guys are tying me up here on time. Philippians 4.13. Everybody knows what it says. All the athletes use it. Huh? They write it under their eyes. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Let me tell you something. The only thing that you can do through him and he can do in you is what he tells you to do. Hmm? This is not about being America's team or being the greatest pass receiver in the world. Huh? This is all about doing what he tells you to do. He gives you the assignment. And through him, all the things that he's given you can be accomplished. This is not at your whim. I want to be a fireman. So that means that he's going to help you be a great fireman. You're going to be a great fireman if he's called you to be a fireman or whatever it happens to be. You know, we try and bring, we try and bring God's plan down to some human level. That is a human level, huh? That cheapens the fact that he's God. Because in all of this, in all of the love that we know he has for us, he's still our heavenly father. He's still our God. He is still the creator. It is he that we honor in everything we do. 1 Corinthians 15.10. This makes it even more clear. Paul speaking, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. That's why comparisons are so stupid. You just need to learn to be ecstatic about who you are. Huh? You need to be ecstatic about who you are, who you are. I mean, honestly, especially if you're struggling being you. How in the world are you, you going to be somebody that you think is better than you if you're just struggling to be you? No, he said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Hallelujah. You know, often as you're growing, as you're maturing, as you're young, as you look forward and you have all of these great ideas and plans between your ears and I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to do the other. And then you come to your senses and re- receive the Lord Jesus and the Father comes into your life and you begin to hear the word of God and then you begin to realize there's somebody that cares more about you than you yes. and wants you to do better than you want to do. And when you understand that, then you're able to hear his voice. And then you become fulfilled in what you do because you're only interested in pleasing him. Hallelujah. Sure, we want to do, we want to do a, good, uh, a good job for people around us, people that depend on us, uh, people that we work for, whatever. But the bottom line is you'll never do that until he's more important than they are. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You'll never do it until, 
until he's more important than they are. Everything you do, everything you do, everything any of us do, it's an extension of how we see him. But because nobody ever stopped to think about that connection with him is absolutely critical in the success. <laughs> did you think I was going to come off there? I'm good, babe. You want me to do some exercise for you, son? You want me to do a cartwheel or something for you? <laughs> ever seen a 76-year-old do a cartwheel? <laughs> Don't do that? Okay. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Huh? See, we're the church. Right. We have to think about where success really comes from. Yeah. And that comes from our connection with him. Yeah. So to the degree that we're, that we're truly connected with him, that's what will produce the success in everything else we do. That's what produces the success. Not your want to. Because you can want to or you want to. But until you do do, you won't move as quickly. <laughs> or as comfortably. Amen. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. In other words, bless God, I'm going to take advantage of his grace. Huh? I'm going to get my, uh, I think I can accomplish something by myself thoughts out of the way. But I labored more abundantly than they all. But again, he defers Yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. Yeah. Hallelujah. He knew, he knew, Paul knew that even as gifted as he was naturally and in the world, his relationship with God showed him that his success and his fulfillment was tied directly to his recognition that it wasn't him but it was God's grace in him. You know, he saw that back in Galatians when he talked about being crucified with Christ. Man, you know how he, you know how he, you know how he figured all those things out? He got quiet. Yes, that's right. He pulled away from all of the stuff. Yes. And he just got quiet. And see, God knows when you pull away and get quiet, whether it's for an hour, five minutes, two or three days, he knows what you're pulling away for. And you're not going to be disappointed. Could be five minutes here, eight minutes there. But when it's sincere from here, he'll meet you there. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 3, 5. Paul was an amazing guy. He said, not that we are sufficient of ourselves. You're blessed. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Isn't that good? Our sufficiency is of God. And the way you can honestly say that is you can, you can begin to make yourself dependent on being dependent on him. So you can say that. So you don't get, you, don't get, you know, excited about accolades or right. praise or right. Right. honor. I mean, the Bible says you, honor, you give honor to those honors do, but, but somebody that's looking for honor is not very honorable. <laughs> but when we know our sufficiency is of him. Yes. See, the world is based on personal accolades. He did this, he did that, she did this, they did that. Huh? Blah, 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 blah. Huh? But, but anything that we accomplish is just like Paul, just like Paul discussed here. My sufficiency is of God. This is not me. This is Christ in me. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to look at some verses here quick, and, and we're, I'm going to slip back and forth here real quick, but we're going to get this in. Second Timothy, Second Timothy 4, verses 1 and 2. PC kind of mentioned this, but we, 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 we've talked a lot about it over the last couple of years especially. But, uh, you know, this is time for the church to shine. 
you know, once the, once the world became, became blatantly stupid, yeah, once it was perfectly obvious that the world was gobbled up, yeah. that, the, that the greater percentage of them uh, had, had bought into uh, uh, serving the prince of darkness. You can't do what the world is doing. You can't do that and be connected with anybody other than the enemy. No way. Let me go as far as to say this. You can't be a believer and be that carnal. You can't. At the very, at the very most, some of those people may have a form of godliness. And I could mention their names right now, but there's no connection with the Father. We can tell that. And Jesus made it very clear. He said, you'll be known by your fruit. You don't have to have a word from the Lord to know somebody is right or wrong. It's easy to tell. Would he still love to have him in his kingdom? Absolutely. But until then, we're going to take authority over anyone and everything that keeps us from being and having everything God's called us to have. And if that's going to be the case, then we got to be correct. We got to be right. We have to be focused. We have to be willing to be every bit as loud, if not more so, than the darkness around us. We've got to not be ashamed that we are now the light of this world. And a light is not to be hidden. A light is to be exposed. And we should not be embarrassed to be louder and more excited about what he's done for us than what the enemy is doing to mankind. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 2, message. I can't impress this on you too strongly. Paul talking to Timothy. God is looking over your shoulder. Christ himself is the judge with the final say on everyone, living and dead. He is about to break into the open with his rule. So proclaim the message with intensity. Be serious, Timothy, about what you preach and what you teach. Be an example, Timothy, of what I've taught you. Keep on your watch. Challenge, warn, and urge your people. Don't ever quit. And I like this last statement. Just keep it simple. It is. It's so stinking simple. Huh? It's so stinking simple. You either love him or you don't. And if you do, there are going to be signs following. Everything you touch is going to get lovely. Everything you touch is going to get an opportunity to stand out like a healed thumb. Really simple. Really simple. Not a bunch of deep technicalities. I mean, obviously, we're going to spend eternity learning some of these intricacies. But we don't need those here. We just need to have a revelation of what he's done for us and then just reflect it to the world around us. Hallelujah. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Do you read your Bible? Do you love God enough to read his word? Do you get quiet before the Lord occasionally and just ask him, Father, is there anything I, I'm missing right now? I mean, I know there probably is, but would you share it with me? Hmm. Simple. We talked about in the simple truth this last week or a week before last. As a child. As a child. I enjoy being a 76-year-old child. Not having to accept the responsibility of anything more than what my father directs me to do. And he directs me to say, hallelujah. And then he can make that work in an adult's life if they're listening. But it all begins coming to him as a child. Hallelujah. Glory to God as a child. Kids are something, aren't they? You just want to love them. But sometimes they make it challenging. That's probably how we are with the Father. 
except he's not challenged by anything. Hallelujah. Uh, so I, I said here, keep it simple. And then I, I switched over to 2 Corinthians 11. We got to go real quick. Now you guys stop. You're going to have to hold those other questions. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 11, 2 through 3. Because how did this other one end? Just keep it simple. But here, look what it says in 2 Corinthians 11, 2, 3. Paul speaking, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband. Hmm? He's talking about connecting people with the Lord Jesus. He said that I may present you as a chaste not C-H-A-S-E-D, but a chaste, a clean, a pure. Okay, well, forget it. (laughs) Present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, or I'm concerned, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Huh? Maybe you never had, maybe you never had an event with a, with a mom or a dad as a child. Maybe you have no memory of there really being a loving, accepting, simple mom and kid, kid and dad relationship. Well, you've got to get alone with God then. That's right. That's right. And you've got to allow yourself to be loved by him like only he can love you. Because see, that's where the simple begins. Because if you don't feel good about that, it'll be hard to connect with anything else. Amen. And if you didn't have a parent that was like that, you can forgive them. Because even if they should have known and they didn't. You don't know you don't know until you know you don't know. And we've always got the Father to fall back on. Amen. That's why that needs to be real. Because when that's real with Him, then you're good with Him and you'll be good with others. We don't ever, ever have anybody to blame when we've got him who has taken care of everything for us, past, present, and future. So that's what he's saying. He says, you know, that you'll suddenly be drawn away from the simplicity that's in Christ Jesus. Because there's, you know, there are so many things, technicalities and things people say, well, you're not doing that, and I don't think you're doing that right. And, and you know, just like they did when Jesus came, you, you, can't, you can't do that on the Sabbath. You can't heal somebody on the Sabbath. What's the matter with you, you know? I mean, you didn't wash your hands. Oh, my God, can you imagine what it would be like if Jesus was walking the earth today? (laughs) And the CDC put out their mandate, and you got a mask, you got a distance. You have to wash your hands for 30 seconds or whatever. Hey, look at this hand and remove some fingers. You know, that probably would not be any worse in his eyes than, than you are of your father, the devil. Slip back into 2 Timothy and we're going to close. For those of you that have already shut down, I apologize. 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 5, which uh, are right after 1 and 2 that we already read. He said, you're going to find that there will be times when people will have no stomach for solid teaching, but will fill up on spiritual junk food, and I'm going to add, if that, catchy opinions that tickle their fancy. They'll turn their backs on truth and chase mirages. But, but you keep your eye on what you're doing. 
Accept the hard times along with the good. Keep the message alive. Do a thorough job as God's servant. We're in the best times ever. I believe that there are men and women of God. I believe some of you are even among them that are not going to shut up. That there is going to be this righteous strength well up on the inside of you. And you're going to begin to wonder who you are. You're going to begin to wonder where all of who you become came from. And I'm here to tell you, it's because of you knowing him. It's because of you being serious about that relationship. Listen, really, he doesn't need He doesn't need you to know much. He just needs you to know him. Because when you know him, he'll fill in the blanks for every situation that comes up. Super natural guidance because of your devotion to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 